AMD sent over this XFX RX 464GB card, and it's pretty awesome where we're going to be benchmarking it in the video, uh, and I've got to say, especially for the price that it's at, this is already an incredible graphics card, despite the DirectX 12 and Vulkan performance improvements. So as usual, the back of the box has all of the new features, including the 90mm silent but deadly fans, which obviously come in a pack of two here, as it's a double uh, fan design. But uh, yeah, either way, the actual card itself is a little bit longer than the reference, so the reference is basically the same length as the PCIe slots. And as you can see, the fans have a cool party trick where you can pull them out of their slots to uh, basically clean the uh, heatsink underneath. Also, as I said, this card is a little bit longer. You have a, a plastic extension bracket to hold the card up, but the actual PCB is quite short, uh, and the actual heatsink itself, you don't get too much in the way of sort of aluminium there, but that doesn't matter too much as the card is actually really quite cool. You also get an extra 6-pin PCIe power connector. The rear I.O. is a DVI-D port, HDMI 2.0 port, and DisplayPort 1.4 port. And while it's not the most stylish uh, graphics card I've ever put in a system, it still doesn't look too bad and does a really good job of cooling. In terms of performance, or at least in terms of specs anyway, we've got 896 stream processors, a 1200 MHz boost clock, a 1090 MHz core clock, 4 gigs of GDR5, and a rough board power of 75 watts. Obviously, I have that extra 6-pin uh, power connector for another 75, so selling 150, but regardless, um, in terms of performance, it actually does a really good job here, especially uh, in the games that I've tested, and considering that the, the you know it's designed for a sort of 1080p 60fps esports games, running dirt Rally on Ultra 1080p at 42 FPS really isn't bad, and Doom with Vulcan 55 FPS on Ultra with AX TSAA, so that's really, really impressive, and it did a really good job here, especially with the games like GTA as well. On very high settings, I'm seeing basically 60 FPS average, uh, which is just it's really awesome, and the uh, sort of performance advantage you get in DirectX 12 and Vulcan really does make a big difference here, so that's really cool. In terms of temperatures, I saw it pretty much max out at 66 degrees although uh, my sort of average running temperature was about 55, so that's pretty awesome. Now I'm not necessarily one for the lower end graphics market. I started off on HD 6870, went to 7870, R9 280, and then a GTX 980, and now 980 Ti. So I've always stayed kind of mid to high end, but I've got to say this card is absolutely incredible, especially for the price you pay versus the performance you get. Now the titles that I benchmarked weren't necessarily the ones AMD are expecting you to play it's very much an esports kind of 1080p FPS, uh, 1080p 60 FPS type card, but um, this is just like the, the incredible thing for me is that for games like Doom on ultra settings with uh, AX TSAA, um, I was seeing 55 FPS using the Vulcan API, which is just incredible uh, performance. Obviously, I was seeing about 60 FPS average on very high settings in uh, GTA 5. Uh, obviously, Dirt Rally was like 40 to 45 FPS on ultra settings. So if you move that down to high or medium settings, you're easily going to see 60 FPS um, at 1080p and that's really what this card is designed for. And especially with more Vulcan and DX12 titles coming out, I can definitely see this being a very playable card, especially a few years into the future, even if you have to turn it down to high or medium, um, it's still going to be a really awesome card for the newer games. So yeah, it's just it's really, really impressive. Now, and the this specific card is also really cool as well, because the removal fans means it's easy to clean and sort of dust out. Um, the actual fans themselves sort of, sort of start stop, so that uh, it's very quiet or obviously silent when you're doing web browsing type stuff. And then when you're gaming on it, it's actually still pretty quiet too. And temperatures, I was seeing sort of average temperature of about 55 celsius with a maximum of 66 which is still really good especially in terms of the uh, you know like reference cards that normally hit like 70 80 uh, celsius um, so that's really awesome and obviously uh, with the kind of general RX 460 you can get them without power connectors as well which means that uh, if you have a low power system or you have pretty much any system with a PCIe X16 lane you can just throw it in uh, and it should work just fine so that's really really awesome. Um, otherwise, it's uh, just a really impressive card. The uh, price, I mean, in terms of performance, it's about half of that, uh, half of an RX 480, but at the same time, it's about half the price, so you've got to give them to that there. And uh, yeah, if you have uh, very little money and you want to get a better graphics card, this is definitely the one I recommend because it's absolutely fantastic. In terms of scoring, I'm going to go for a 5 for 5 money, 5 for performance. Um, 
I think I'm going to have to go for five functionality, but I think 4.5 for styling. It's not the prettiest card and there's a kind of plastic extender on the back, but it, regardless, it still does look pretty good. Uh, and it's going to have to be a five for Tetsu BB score. It's also going to get the uh, best, uh, the top tier award because it really is a fantastic graphics card. And if you have very little money, I honestly recommend that this is, this is the card you go for because it's fantastic and really, really cheap in terms of graphics cards and especially in terms of performance. So I think that's kind of it. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. If you liked the graphics card or enjoyed the video, feel free to hit the like button and subscribe if you did find the video useful and that uh, you know want to see more GPU reviews. I've actually got an aftermarket RX 480 that's sitting right next to the camera that I'll be doing a review on fairly shortly. So do stick around for that. If you didn't like uh, didn't like the video, feel free to dislike it, but let me know why in the comments down below so I can improve for next time. Um, and if you're interested in benchmarking DX12 or Vulcan games, check out my video on the uh, application that myself and my friend Jim from Adore TV wrote that actually lets you benchmark, or at least uh, aids you in benchmarking DirectX 12 and Vulcan games. Um, it's actually pretty awesome and we're redoing a lot of stuff as well, so it's getting even better as we go. I'll leave a link to the GitHub down below too, but uh, yeah, other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to check out plenty of others. The RX4, uh, RX470 video came out uh, last week, so if you want to check that out and you have a bit more of a budget, then uh, you know, feel free to watch that video. And on that, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.